Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here from Moss Pond and Gun and I've got Skinny Medic with me. Uh, he's got another YouTube channel, a lot of uh, preparedness, medical things you definitely need to check out. But uh, today we're doing a bit of a vlog for you, very informal here in the new reloading shop. And uh, you know, every now and then we do these vlog videos where we talk about preparedness, we talk about prepping and all of this sort of stuff. So we want to discuss the importance of medical supplies and trained medical personnel in a disaster situation. Um, you know, a lot of people associate food and water and firearms and all of these things with a disaster situation. You know, they think like Walking Dead where guys are walking around with crossbows and water and stuff like that. But uh, w why is it important to be trained medically in a disaster situation? You know, it's like you were saying, you know, everybody preps for those three big, but they always leave out the medical side of it. And what you've talked about is the EMS is not coming. If we have a big disaster, they're busy doing other things. So getting 911 help is not going to be there. Even the hospitals are going to be overloaded. So to be able to hunker down and take care of yourself and your family medical wise is extremely important. Sure. Even just having, you know, basic banding supplies, some, uh, some medicines, over the counter medicines, you know, you don't have to worry about doing blood transfusions or anything crazy. But just having the basic supplies could definitely save your life and save you from getting infections and getting really sick. Sure. Well, you know, in, in these types of situations, we're talking about a, a complete breakdown of uh, society, a breakdown of government and services. And of course, with those things, uh, help is not always going to be just a phone call away. And in some cases, even right now, like say we're in complete peacetime, everything's normal, everything's running along just like it needs to, even still. Uh, help can be sometimes a half hour to 45 minutes or more away, uh, depending on the location that you're in. You might live in a rural area. So sometimes, you know, help might not be able to get there quick enough. You need to have somebody on your property or in your land or, or just somewhere nearby that is a first responder, or you need to train yourself to be a first responder. And uh, infections really in, in those types of disaster situations, you know, back in the old days, you know, if a, if a guy was tending to his field or whatever, or, or tending to crops or fishing or hunting or whatever he was doing, uh, and he cut himself bad, you know, a little bitty cut that we don't think anything of because we have all this medicine, you, you could die from that yeah, exactly. back in the day. So, you know, being able to, to, to respond to that and handle it properly. Um, what can somebody do just initially to, to put together like a good kit or buy a kit? Is there anything like off the shelf they can do to, to just help them? Uh, other than training, but equipment-wise. Yeah, I mean, obviously training is very important. You can look at, you know, American Red Cross, uh, HA, you can get training. That's very important. Uh, but buy a good medical kit. I mean, you can go to Walmart and spend a little 5 or $6 on a medical kit, and it's going to come with, like, 20 Band-Aids, some little minor, like, 2 by 2s but like that. But spend some good money. Like, get good quality 5x9s, uh, 4 by 4s four four clean. Um, you can have sterile and non-sterile dressings. Uh, you can use the non-sterile just to immediately stop the bleeding. Sure. But then have sterile dressings for afterwards so you don't get that infection. You don't have to uh, worry about you know, injuries later on. Sure, sure. So uh, last night, um, Skinny Medic and I, we were talking a little bit about medicines and things like that. And I know you guys, I've been watching the channel. Y'all been doing some stuff with essential oils. Yes. Uh, other things like that. But you also mentioned uh, fish antibiotics. Yes. All right. Now, usually antibiotics are prescribed, uh, to my understanding. Yes, you have to. Uh, you, you don't really just go and get antibiotics without some type of a prescription. But with fish antibiotics, tell them about that. We were talking about that a little bit. Yes. Um, you can, there's several different places on the internet you can order uh, fish amoxicillin which is what we do because that's generally like the big umbrella antibiotic now they make some other antibiotics you can do but it's the exact same pill when you purchase the fish amoxicillin over the internet it's going to come and it'll look it'll have a little fish mox a little fish on it but then if you go to cvs or any other local pharmacy and get a prescription for amoxicillin it's the exact same pill you lay them beside they're the same color they're the same numbers on them so they're identified uh, and they're the exact same medicine you can get uh, a nurse's guide book. There's apps on the phone to tell you how much to take and for mm -hmm. how long to take. So, but it's the exact same thing. So if a grid down situation or you, know, you can't get to the pharmacy, sure. you have the ability to protect yourself. So basically, I guess what Skinny Medic's getting at is so you get in a situation, you, you, you fall and you get a, a bad scratch on you, you know, clean it, sanitize it, patch it up, pop a couple of antibiotics and on with your life and in theory, probably get along just fine. Um, when it comes to identifying 
medications. That's also something that I view as being very important. I think every household should have one of the like big Bibles of pills where you can go through and identify pills. Uh, you know, uh, in a disaster situation, there's a lot of gathering and, and sort of you know scavenging that may have to be done depending on how long it happens and how sparsely located people are and, and, and any number of things. I mean, you may come across something in your travels that could be beneficial to you, but properly identifying uh, something you find is going to be the key to making sure you're not making a fatal mistake, overdosing on something or taking the wrong thing, mm -hmm. or wasting good medication on something you may not even be needing to use it for. Right. So having that big book of pills and being able to identify medications. Also, plants. Uh, that's something that I believe a lot of people have a very, you know, low understanding mm -hmm. of medicinal plants and more importantly poisonous plants yes. things to stay away from uh, because you think poison ivy and poison oak and all of these poisons that affect your skin and give you kind of a rash and everything you think it's bad now when you can go up to the pharmacy and just get some cream or something yes. imagine something like that coming along and you're not properly prepared and life's going to be a living hell for you right and so that's why you need to stock up on those stuff now <laughs> while it's still available uh, a lot of times we'll go to like the big bins and have like 88 cent bin. Yeah. Buy your medications there. Uh, you can buy Tylenol, uh, Motrin, the Benadryl, the creams. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you have to buy the generic form, but it's mm -hmm. still the same medication. It's a lot cheaper. And those medicines are eventually, yes, they're going to go bad. Yeah. But it takes a long time for those medicines to expire just because the expiration date, it says it's expired, it's still good. Right. Uh, it's probably may not be as effective. So, sure. but it's still good to use that medicine. So and we it's have, better than nothing. Exactly. If you've got nothing, yes. you know. So we have stockpiles just plain over the counter medicine because if we do to go to a grid down situation and I'm chopping wood, my back's gonna really hurt. I'm sure. a skinny fella and this is gonna hurt. So <laughs> if I can take the Tylenol to hit my back, you yep. know, that's gonna just help improve. You know, we're gonna be doing a lot more manual labor in a sure. grid down situation. So having that over-the-counter medicine could really help as well. Yeah, not only that, but your water intake is always going to increase when you're not only in a stressful situation, but in a situation where you're doing a lot more manual labor. You need to make sure you increase your water intake. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to make sure you're remaining healthy, your metabolism stays where it needs to. Obviously, you're staying hydrated, keeping those cells full of water, keeping them moving, keeping them you know, doing what they need to do. You can go about three days <laughs> without water, but you're not going to be healthy three days. No. But yeah, so having... <laughs> having that water intake to take and how to be able to filter water as well. Sure. That's one of the things too that I think would be a big problem in a grid down situation is the water system. Uh, someone drinks bad water, you're gonna get really sick. You're gonna have diarrhea, uh, nausea, vomiting. Yep. And so Dysentery. If yes, so if you're sick like that, you're not gonna need any help to anybody. So right. being able to filter your water and you know protect yourself and your family is gonna be crucial. Well see dysentery in my opinion <clears throat> in a disaster situation, dysentery is a very serious condition because your body exerts more water when you're passing movement, mm -hmm. when you're having bowel movement, you're gonna actually lose more and more water having to go number two versus number one. Right. So that's certainly a good idea to make sure you're staying hydrated, but make sure that you got the life straws and the filter packs. I know uh, Camelback, I believe, and also I think, um, I wanna say Blackhawk also makes a, uh, a life-saving bottle that's got you know, a filter, a life straw built into mm -hmm. it. You know, look at the water, you know, draw it out of the cleanest area you can, screw the top on, and it's safe to drink, you know, within reason, obviously. There's also uh, the option of boiling water, things like that. I mean, of course, we all know these things. And when it comes to water sources, you know, if a water source is very still and it's not moving, you need to have suspect of it, mm -hmm. uh, of having some type of contamination or, or bad things that are in it. Uh, and then also, of course, moving water is going to be probably a better option if it you is. can help it. Um, another thing that people don't consider with medical treatment in a disaster situation are very simple things like uh, actually what happened to me the other day on my new property. Uh, Skinny Medic came out to my house the other day and I got the crap stung out of me by a bunch of yellow jackets the day before. So like snake bite kits, yes. um, you know, what, what were we saying for people that are allergic, their, their throat will close up? The EpiPens. EpiPens, yes. okay. Have now, do those. you have to have a prescription to get those? You do, you have to have a prescription, but if you'll talk to your doctor, uh, they will write you multiple prescriptions for that generally. They will. So you can keep one in your car, keep one in your backpack, <clears throat> you know, I would keep one in your bug out bag. Mm -hmm. So you can have, in multiple places, you can have your EpiPen, and you, usually you can talk to your doctor, and they're pretty lenient on that, though. Okay, so, so, so if I tell my doctor, hey, you know, I, I think that I could be in a situation where I may need a lot of these, mm -hmm. then as long as it makes sense to him, any doctor can just decide, okay, that makes sense. 
we'll do this, that, that's okay, and he'll write yep. you a prescription for however many you need. And while you're talking to your doctor, you know, don't lie to him, of course. I wouldn't recommend that. But oh, yeah, I'm not saying lying. I'm saying being honest. Yes. But if it makes sense, if he, like, if he understands what he's hearing and, and yeah. everything makes sense. They will it. write you a prescription for, let's say, you take high blood pressure medicine. Mm -hmm. um, they will write you a prescription for a little bit longer time. That way you can kind of store that. That way if a grid down situation happens, you at least have your blood pressure medicine and <clears throat> cholesterol medicine, other medicines prescription wise, if you've been kind of building those up. Mm -hmm. But talk to your doctor and kind of express your, your fears and what's going on. And, sure. And, and they may work with you. Yeah, absolutely. And that was actually going to be something I would mention as well, is that if you do have some type of life changing or life altering prescription medications that you're on, probably a good idea to try to get at least a 45 day supply ahead of mm -hmm. your normal supply and that way you, you you know you have a little bit of a window there hopefully things can straighten out within that amount of time now everything that i've been able to determine about disaster situations let's say things like uh you know katrina you got things like just all you know basically any kind of bad thing that happens like that mm -hmm. there is somewhat of a shelf life for a natural disaster, man-made disaster, most people agree that between 30 and 45 days, it's safe to say that everything's gonna be blown over by that point. So yep. if you can hold up for between, let's just say 45 to 60 days, then you know that you're probably gonna be okay. Right, and exactly. part of that involves making sure that you, of course, in the scope of this video, uh, making sure that you are properly prepared medically um, you know, and like, I, I like what you said the other day, or we were talking yesterday and you said that if you can take a life, you should be able to save a life. Exactly. You know, all these people, they, they get all bent out of shape about, well, you know, I don't need to worry about medical supplies because I got all these guns and we're <laughs> trained and we're uber cool and all this stuff. But the bottom line is somebody is going to get hurt. Yes. Eventually. And it, and, and it doesn't have to be a gunfight. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It could just be your chopping, chopping wood. wood. Yep. And, and your damn, your spade slipped and, and snapped your toe off or yep. something or whatever. Or you break a limb or you're, you're hanging something or, or fixing something and you got something fall on you and break an arm. I mean, things happen by mistake. So it's not just things that we do to each other. It's things that just inadvertently happen to us because humans are a relatively accident prone. Happens. You know, having different first aid kits around the homestead, around the house, in your vehicle, at the gun range is very important. I think, you know, because mm -hmm. you have different types of first aid kits. You know, we have a first aid kit that stays in our van that's for our family that's more oriented towards like family and our kids because we have two small children. And then I have a first aid kit that stays in my Jeep and for sure. me when I'm out hiking, outdoors, just kind of a general first aid kit. Yeah. We have a large container stuff inside that's, you know, more uh, home stuff. And then I have a trauma bag that's just for treating trauma. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, you know, you're talking about different trauma kits in different areas. I mean, a good example is like in the boat. You know, there's going to be certain things you would have in your boat that you would need for injuries that are likely to occur in an aquatic situation, right. you know, versus if you're in the woods and you're worried about snake bites. So it's pretty much just common sense stuff. I mean, all of this is common sense. If you got the proper supply to meet the proper level of training, as long as those things line up together, and, and your whole group of people's not a bunch of just boobless rubes, you know, morons, then you're mm -hmm. probably gonna be okay. Right. Um, why don't you show them some of your IFAC here? Because I know uh, sometime back, uh, we did a video on Skinny Medic's uh, IFAC. You know, he basically, that, may, that stands for uh, Individual First Aid Kit, right. IFAC. Yep. And uh, there's sort of a whole uh, method of use that surrounds that, that I discussed in the video. Uh, but we do wanna show you a couple of his in case you're looking for you know, a take home, buy it now type unit. Yeah. Um, show them what you got. And this quick. is, you know, IFAC is kind of a broad term, but this yes. is my small uh, Molly kit. Yeah. It comes with five by nines, four by fours. You get clean triangle bandages, uh, EMT scissors, you get gloves. There's Benadryl, ibuprofen, Tylenol, and aspirin. There's a bee sting kit in here. There's alcohol swabs. There's the butterfly uh, bandages, like if you need to do sutures, but not, don't have the actual kit. Mm -hmm. This kind of will help you there. And then uh, you've got Band-Aids, yep. and then you've got a quick clot sponge for your more serious bleeding. Yep. And then there's a roll of tape. Now this is good quality EMS medical grade qualities because this is the same company that I ordered through my EMS uh, job that we ordered the same supplies. So you're getting good quality stuff sure. here. And then this is my larger kit here. This is the large Molly kit. Comes with all the same supplies that the small one did. 
but you get a cat tourniquet that's a brand new cat tourniquet. Sure. You get a pressure bandage. You get an NPA that goes into the nose. To that's help. a nasal pharyngeal airway. Yes, there you go. You've been studying. I remember a little, <laughs> I remember a little bit from the military. Okay. So that will protect someone's airway. And it doesn't have yep. to hit the gag reflex. They're not going to throw up on you. And Good. then you have a CPR shield. So it gives you a little more stuff. This is a more well-rounded kit that I thought to put together. And um, this is my trauma kit here. And this is designed around the TCCC, the military's class for uh, trauma. And I thought about it, and that's what this is designed around. Uh, you get two chest seals because with high energy uh, trauma, penetrating trauma, you can get an entry and an exit wound. Mm -hmm. So it's important to seal both sides of those. Uh, you get EMT scissors again. You get a Celox roll, which is a really big roll for packing wounds. It's a hemostatic agent <clears throat> that's going to help the clotting agent as well. And then you get another cat tourniquet. You get a pressure bandage. Uh, you get another MPA. Okay. And you get uh, two pair of gloves. Good. So it's designed to anything basic trauma that's major trauma, that kit should be able to take care of and handle. And a lot of people, you know, they don't really tend to know some of the little, like, just simple uses that these tools and, and these kits have. And, like, for instance, scissors, you know, that's for, like, cutting the clothing away. You don't want to try to pull clothing away because, like, say you have a burn, you don't want to pull someone's skin if they're badly burned or something like that. So right. you always cut the clothing away from the wound before you try to assess the situation. Also, cutting the clothing away is good because as you cut it away, you know, you might see an initial area where there's, a, you know, some trauma, mm -hmm. but you want to be able to see around the trauma if there's any secondary trauma to the nearby area. So cutting the clothing away, a uh, very simple thing. You also, a lot the of trauma people, too, so. yeah, exactly. Well, and plus they're probably fighting you. Yeah. Like, ah, don't do that. <laughs> But, um, you know, also a lot of people don't know how tourniquets work, okay? And uh, the cat uh, style tourniquet, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but the cat style tourniquet was more or less invented by a ranger. Mm -hmm. It was. Who, you know, he wanted a, a small, simple tourniquet that was easy enough to apply, uh, very modular and, and able to, to adjust to a wide variety of different sizes for mm -hmm. different limbs, both arms and legs. And it's basically just a Velcro strap. And of course it straps down just like you would strap down any type of Velcro uh, strap that has say like a hook on it. Yep. And then you've got just a little, a little uh, nod that you can turn and it just tightens. And if you're, say your leg is blown off or you have some type of serious injury like that, the tourniquet will cut off the blood flow and uh, from going to that limb and of course keep you from bleeding out. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand about tourniquets and one thing that I've always understood about them, I, I suppose just my training is that you should always monitor the amount of time that an individual's limb is under a tourniquet. Uh, so, you know, after a certain amount of time, let's say the bleeding's bad enough to merit a tourniquet, mm -hmm. um, but the limb can still be saved. If you cut the blood flow completely for too long, it can kill the limb. Yeah, it has to be amputated. They say teachable C, the guidelines now are saying two to three hours for two a tourniquet. Two to three hours? Two to three hours. But they've been on as long as 16 hours. There was a pilot that uh, crashed, he applied the tourniquet, and the tourniquet was on for 16 hours, and they completely- and kept his limb? Kept his limb. Hmm. So that's a big misconception that people have is when you apply the tourniquet that you're automatically gonna lose the limb, and that's not the case anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, but I suppose like, um, you know, like in, in the CLS, like the military teaches like the T thing, mm -hmm. like you put the time, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I guess for like somebody that is getting a, a troop that's brought in from the, the front line that they don't know how long that limb has been tourniquet. Right. I guess it makes sense for them to know when it was exactly applied and that way they can at least get an idea of, I guess, how urgent it is for them to exactly. try to, I mean, I don't know, just the, seems that, that One way. of the other misconceptions too is I talked to people who said they're gonna make a tourniquet, they're gonna use their belt for a tourniquet. Yeah. If you get a high energy trauma to your femoral artery, which is the artery that runs down the center of your leg, um, you have three minutes and you will completely bleed out. That's about the size of your thumb and it's pumping blood. So you've got three minutes before your complete blood volume will be pumped out. So that's about a minute and a half before you're gonna start losing consciousness. Oh, I know. So to have a tourniquet close by that you can get to very easy and the simple to use is very important because you're not gonna have time to pull your belt off or use a shirt. You know, if you have to, that's all you have, then you do. But tourniquets have come down in price. They're reasonably, they're affordable. Yeah. Just to have a couple of them laying around, have them close by in your eye fact, have one on you, on your vest, on sure. your belt is extremely important. Yep, and, and I agree. And, and most importantly, make sure that, you know, whatever medical equipment, you know, you can buy all the equipment you want in the world, but just make sure that you completely understand how to use the equipment, seek mm -hmm. out the proper training. Um, I would certainly look at some of uh, Skiddy Medic's IFAX. I'll uh, put a, a link in the description box below so you guys can, uh, you know, seek those out. If you want to look at pricing, ordering, uh, you know, he sells them. So if you want to check them out, 
Uh, I want to definitely thank Skinny Medic for taking the time to, to make this video with me. I know it was a little bit long and drug out, but I think that it's a very important concept. You know, when, when we do these vlogs, we like to put out information about prepping, and, and that is something that's very important to me, is being independent, mm -hmm. being self-sufficient, and being able to care for the people around you. You know, your wife, your kids, your, your neighbors. In a disaster situation, you're gonna be a leader in your community if you can be the person that's a go-to person in every single aspect, and that includes being able to administer first aid to people that need it. I appreciate you having appreciate you having me on the channel. No problem. Um, like I said, if you guys want to check out my my YouTube channel, I do videos on how to use all this equipment. Now we always recommend you take a first aid and you know trauma class, sure. but. If you've got a few minutes, watch my videos and I'll show you how to use a cat tourniquet, how to use a Celex roll, you know, how to bandage people's arms and awesome. stuff like that. So, well, thank I know you. I'm going to so, uh, certainly go back and watch some of the older videos too because I know uh, I could probably use a refresher. I mean, this is probably one area that I think most of us all, you know, need some type of refreshment in more <laughs> often than not is first aid. So, you know, man up, admit it, you need to train, you need more time. We all know we do. That's one area we're all you know, lacking in. So I know uh, I definitely learned a lot from this video. So uh, guys, we appreciate you watching. Have a good one and we'll catch you next time.